We're taking a little break from the kitchen this week. I'm having the oven revulcanized. That's a thing. But in the meantime, that gives me time to talk about something that I've been wanting to talk about since the very first episode of The Better Balkan. Movies in television, specifically Macedonian movies in television. So, pour yourself a big bowl of popcorn and a tall glass of rakia. Because I'm Nick Sadovsky, and this is The Better Balkan, and we're having a movie night. I don't have popcorn. I only have rakia. Now, I live in Los Angeles, pretty big movie town, maybe you've heard of it. And being a big movie town means that all the big Macedonian movies end up here in their life cycle. And this year's no different. It's Oscar season, and this year Macedonia has a movie that's making history. It's called Honeyland from Tamara Kotevska and Lubo Stefanov. It's been nominated for two Academy Awards, one for Best Documentary and one for Best International Feature Film. Now, I'll be honest with you, I haven't really watched the Oscars since Titanic won. I've always been more of a red carpet kind of guy, but this year you better believe I'll be watching and rooting for Honeyland. Now this whole Honeyland and Oscars buzz thing has got me a little bit nostalgic. Like I said, I live in Los Angeles and every big Macedonian movie ends up here at a certain point. And I have been to every Macedonian movie premiere that I can think of at least. Hell, at the last one for Mocking of Christ, I brought this enormous bowl of pasta salad. I, w I even made a meme out of it. <laughs> See what happens when you don't follow the Facebook page? Now, I've seen a lot of Macedonian movies, and I will say they're good, very good. There's some very talented filmmakers and artists that really know how to photograph that country very, very well. And just the way they do it is the next best thing to actually being there is to watch some of these movies. Because I'll tell you from experience, some of the shots... It's really, it, it really takes me back. It really feels like you are there. And that just comes from good filmmaking. Now, one thing I feel like I have to address is the subject matter for some of these movies. Um, these movies, at least the award-winning the award -winning ones, tend to focus on more of the tragic parts of Macedonian history. Things like life under the Ottomans, life under communism, life after communism. Uh, the difficult relationship with some of the neighboring countries, things like that. The movies don't necessarily, aren't necessarily about that, but it's kind of used as a backdrop for the overarching story. Now, I try to keep this show and this channel really light and fun, and I don't really feel qualified enough to do a deep dive of that portion of Macedonian film. Now, if you're interested in more of the back history of some of these films, I highly recommend doing your own independent research online. There's no shortage of far more qualified people than me that can point you in the right direction and really give you more of a well-rounded experience when it comes to watching these kinds of films. Again, no disrespect to the filmmakers, but again, I just try to keep this show fun. Now that being said, I will let the filmmakers speak for themselves. Let's take a look at 1994's Before the Rain, directed by Milcho Monchevsky, starring Rade Serbedzia. Now according to Milcho, a basic plot summary is three interconnected stories of love under the threat of civil war in Macedonia and London. Now I won't give away the ending, but if you've seen You Got Mail, it's nothing like that. Now, a fun piece of trivia, the New York Times included Before the Rain in their 1,000 best films ever made. Here's an interesting interview with the star, Rade Serbezia, about making the film. It was important for me because this film was talking about war. And at that time, it was really the most important thing for me uh, to try to do something to help to my people or to stop the war. My native language is uh, Croatian, but, uh, you know, I had to learn Macedonian lines. I remember that we had a, about two months preparation. Meto Ivanovsky, who is one of the best uh, not only Macedonian actors, he was one of the best Yugoslavian actors. So fantastic uh, be with in the in same scene with such a great actor. 
Ovo je samo pešadija. Ušte političari ni falat. Kaj si se kao profor? Če se vrata tidnata nedela, če ki se kopat mrtviti, gotova rabota. Aj na zdravje vojna. Slikaj malko. Zdaj što? A. I ti si lud. When we started shooting, uh, we started in Macedonia. And Macedonia is a special country. Warm, friendly, good food. Now these films, as good as they are, aren't great for what I would call repeat viewing, meaning once you've seen it, you've kind of seen it. The best example I could give is Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park versus Steven Spielberg's Schindler's List. Both are amazing films, both won Academy Awards, but I've seen Jurassic Park a hundred times and I've seen Schindler's List once. It's just the nature of the subject matter. Now those are the award-winning Macedonian movies. Macedonian television, on the other hand, is completely different. Enter the Makedonski Narodni Prikazni. Now there is a lot to say about this show. My parents somehow had it on VHS when I was a kid, and we used to watch it all the time. This is pre-internet, and I grew up with this show. And when I say it's a show, I don't mean there's like one overarching story that runs across like a season. No, every episode is its own self-contained story. None of them connect. The best way I can describe it is probably like a Macedonian Twilight Zone. I'm not joking about that. Now, the Makedonski Narodni Prikazni loosely translates to Macedonian folk stories. The show started in 1986 and continues to play to this day. The show does have an IMDB page, you can look it up. Uh, IMDB has a brief plot summary. It says, a long-running TV series composed exclusively of Macedonian folk legends and proverbs. Thank you, Mario. No need for a last name, I see. Now let's talk about the cast. Like I said, the show is still running to this day, and cast members have kind of come and went, but I'm gonna talk about the original four. Those are the ones that I grew up with, those are the ones that I love. Now the original lineup was Vanko Petrusevski from Skopje, Goce Todorovski from Kichevo, Senka Kolozova from Dobrevo, and her real-life husband, Georgi Kolozov, from Bogdansi. Now, if you follow any kind of Macedonian media, Georgi Kolozov is gonna pop up. He's oftentimes regarded as a legend, by me as well. He has this wonderful aura about him. I, I would kind of compare him to John Wayne, but John Wayne kind of just always played John Wayne. Georgi can actually do different things, and he always has this wonderful just kind of aura about him. Many of the episodes revolve around him. Uh, and oftentimes his real-life wife, Senka, uh, they make an amazing on-screen couple. They're just, they, something about them just feels so, they're funny, but they're also very real at the same time. Now the show is called Macedonian Folk Stories, and folk stories tend to have certain themes that they kind of repeat, and this show is no different. One of my absolute favorite themes ever, and probably one of my favorite things I've ever seen on TV, is anytime these guys would dress up like Gavali. Gavali are basically devils, and these guys are some of the funniest devils I've ever seen. Here's a clip from an episode of a particular Gyavel looking to get married. His Gyavali buddies find some woman that they were going to set him up with. But lo and behold, uh, this woman tends to be meaner than the Gyavel himself. <laughs> so it doesn't really end too well for him. Let's take a look at the clip. <laughs> Ти 
Ποτίζει κάκου, ε! Ποτίζει μήνα μπορεί να μου δώσει, ε! Α, κυβίζ! Κυβίζ, αν κότσετε μαύλα μου, τελικά, ζω, α! Όμπελε! Here's another clip with some Gavali in action. I don't really know what this is in regards to, but I don't want to know. These these are more fun with it when I have no reference to them. Now I'll be honest with you guys, I pulled a ton of clips from this show and they just kind of range all over the place. I couldn't help it because there's just so many of them and they're all so funny. Like this. <laughs> Again, I don't know what that's in reference to, but I don't care because it's just it's just so perfect. Here's another clip. I just I'm just gonna play a bunch of them right now. I don't care. <laughs> Now the show is still running to this day, and the surviving original cast members are still on it, and they're still funny, and they're still great. I can't recommend checking it out enough. Head on over to YouTube and type in the Makedonski Narodni Prikazni and there are hours and hours and hours of episodes. Now I can talk for hours about the Makedonski Narodni Prikazni and you know give you glimpses of it and clips of the show, but to truly appreciate the magic of this show, what I loved about it when I was a kid, we need to dedicate an entire episode and just talk about the Makedonski Narodni Prikazni. So this is gonna be a two-part episode, guys. Tune in next time, and we're gonna we're gonna dissect an entire episode of the Makedonski Narodni Prikazni. I hope you tune in because it's gonna be a whole lot of fun. I'm Nick Sadovsky. This has been the Better Balkan. Okay, it's good. 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 Okay,